Hello YouTube, SWLA Mac 84 again. I've done a little bit of work on my tubes. You can see here. I've got my threads cut and my connection made on one side. And I'm running this in my three jaw chub. Because I have all my pieces cut. They're to rough length. So I just need to come back in and take a couple thousandths off each side until I get my exact length. And they're just rough pipe. I'm going to put a bore through them and I'm going to turn the outside up. So I got my three jaw in here to save me some time. I'm going to I mount, mounted this one up like so and turned it back so that I have a concentric surface. Did all my work on the end here and now I'm going to put another one in. Whenever I go to do the work on the other end, I'm going to mount my four jaw in and I'm going to indicate off of this nice concentric surface and the inside surface which should be exactly the same. But I'll have that in the four jaw, that way I can move it around a little bit. Because my three jaw is close, but when I put it in there, it was about five, six thousandths out, even going around and tightening every jaw. So instead of cutting two unconcentric sides there, I'm gonna put my four jaw in once I'm done with all my three jaw operations. So each one of my tubes, I'm gonna go ahead and cut one end connection on them and give me a, a clean concentric surface that I can indicate off of in my four jaw. So right now in this one, this is gonna be a center tube here. So it has two longer threaded connections on each side in the female. This tube here is gonna be the one that is at the fore end of the suppressor. So the actual end cap of the suppressor is gonna screw into here. And this part here is gonna screw into one of these connections. So I'm going to have a male thread on this side and a female on this side. And the way I've gotten in trouble before in the past was I cut the male because it was easy. But then I go to turn around and put it in the jaws. And since it was three quarters, almost an inch long, I can't grab it anymore. So I learned that lesson, had to order some more material. So I'm going to cut the female threads so that I still have a nice clean OD to grab on whenever I flip it around and put it in the fore jaw. And once I put them in the four jaw, I'm going to run a clean bore through them all. That way that they all have a nice concentric bore so I can make my internals. So what I'm going to do now with this piece, I've got it chucked in there, it's tightened up. And I need to come in and just true this face up because I'm only about 20 thousandths longer than I need to be. So I don't want to take too much meat off of here or I'll be short. And the one thing about the uh, the... ATF paperwork that they ask you about for a, a firearm suppressor is the length. So I want to make sure that my length is actually correct. So I'm going to come in here. I've already faced this off, but I've taken it out of the chuck and put it back in. So I'm just going to take a little clean up on here and then I'm going to clean this OD up. This was previously turned. This was a piece that I had practiced with. So I'm just going to take just enough off of this to make sure that it's round and then I'm just going to continue that back as far as I can and that'll be my indication service for when I flip it around. So I'm going to go ahead and face that off. I'm going to try the autofocus again, simply because my fingers are covered in oil now. So if I had to touch the screen, it would probably mess it up. All right, make sure my speeds are good. I don't need my feeds right now. I was just threading the other piece. And I'm going to run 600 RPM. Okay, and here we go. Once I get in gear, there we go. Okay, I've got that cleaned up. I'm gonna put some feeds on. Feed. 
instead of my lead screaming gauge there. Okay, and that didn't clean up, so I'm going to take another heat. Okay, that cleaned up good. Let me get an OV on there. Okay, 2.480. That should be good with my OD there. Now I'm going to switch over to my boring bar. Just zoom down here. Back you out a little bit. Here. Okay, I'm doing. And I'm going to set up a travel gauge here. Just lightly touches. Okay, that's my zero. And then I'll set my travel dial down here. Okay, now I have a good way to track where I'm going. I mean, even if I come off all the way, it'll still come back to zero, right? As it makes contact. That's always worked for me pretty well. So I need to bore 2.205, a half of an inch deep. So I'm gonna come in, find my zero on my bore, then make a pass down to a half inch, pull out measure, and then make adjustments from there. I'm gonna move you around so you can see a little better. Same speeds and feeds, a little oil in here. I'm gonna come in and find my zero. Okay, I got my zero. I'm gonna take a ten thousandth cut and then I'm gonna watch my dial and make sure I just go a half of it in. That's a good sign. It wasn't too crooked on the board. I, I found a lot of this pipe. <clears throat> I was going to try to just use the nice finish inside of it because <clears throat> it's almost a mirror finish in there. And I thought, oh yeah, I could save a lot of work. Well, I put it in the four jaw. I indicated the outside end, and I was just doing that to see. But I had two indicators on a long piece. I got that within a half of a thousandth. I go in and check the inside. 
was 10,000 thousand. So then I flip it around, I dial in the inside. Then I run around the outside after I had already turned some, still five, six thousand. So the bores were not lined up with each other. I guess when they went through the die, they kind of skewed off from their main track. So I'm gonna have to turn everything, which is fine. I plan on doing it anyway, but I just thought I could save some time. That usually doesn't work out. Let me get a little sip of coffee there. Okay. So I got my half inch deep bore there. Let's see what I'm reading. I've been trying to get in the habit of actually using my micrometers instead of the calipers. Calipers are good for some things, but I noticed that my stuff wasn't fitting together very well. And it was mainly because the things I was trying to measure weren't very conducive to good results with them, like with, a, with the digital calipers. Okay, reading 2.2. O2. So I'm good with that. I need to go to 2.200. 2.200. And I'm still going to double check it with my dial cal with my um, digital calipers. Just because I'm still relatively at new at those and take another snap on there. Okay, 2.002, and I'm getting 2.002 and 5 ten thousandths on my micrometer here, so that's going about where it needs to be. So I'm going to take another hundred off, and then I'm going to check it again. See if I can fit my next size. I'm gonna use the next size up. All right, I'm getting. Let's see if I can show that. I'm two point one oh two and some tenths. And these are telling me two point one oh two. So that's pretty close. I mean. Of course, you know, on these, I don't have the 10,000, the 10,000, but I can live with that. And my tool is exactly on the center line because I took exactly 100 off on my dial. I don't know if you'll be able to see that either, but let's see if I can get in there. That's the exact 100 mark on there, so. And I'm feeling pretty good about all that. That's it's nice for everything to actually work out like it's supposed to. And that's taking some time and watching a lot of YouTube videos from Mr. Pete two 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 and Mr. Keith at Turn Right Machine Works. You know, I've actually gotten pretty good at some of this stuff, and I impress myself sometimes. All right, so I've got my two point two oh five. That's my maximum minor diameter for my class three two and a quarter by 24 threads per inch diameter so that's my actual thread diameter and the rest of this part that's my 2.205 diameter i'm going to have a small clearing in here 
for our little alignment balls. And then I have my thread relief to cut in the back here. This boss is 2.285 for a distance of 100 thousandths. So I need to open that up to 2.285 and go 100 thousandths deep. And since I'm at exactly, oh, well, I'm not at my 2.205 diameter. Oh, I'm going to hit myself. I'm at 2.105, so I have a whole another 100 thousandths to go. Had some nice strings coming off of that one. Clear some of this out of here. I really like this tool though. This very, very sharp edge on it. And it leaves a pretty good finish. I can use finer feeds. I'm not trying to rip it out. It doesn't, need, doesn't seem to need a whole lot of surface feet per minute. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm gonna finish this cut up. Yeah, I stopped a couple of thousand shy of a hundred just so that I can check it again. <laughs> 